so I have previously or recently, um, as of recording this tutorial, made a tutorial about what are migrations. And that was really the first stage in this kind of mini tutorial series about managing data in Django. So this tutorial follows the theme of managing data in Django. And I want to talk about the dump data option. I have previously put, created a tutorial on this or backing up data in the database, but I wanted to go a little bit deeper in this tutorial and give you a better overview of all the commands and all the possibilities utilizing the dump data tool, which is essentially building or creating a backup of data or models or specific models in your database. Now, importantly here, I want to talk about some of the, I guess, quirky type of things or things to look out for when you're creating a backup. Now, one thing that I find interesting that I've seen a lot of people do is make backups of their software, but they don't actually test their backup and then they find it doesn't work. And Django is one of those, or dump data is one of those tools which don't doesn't always work um, as you expect it to. So it's well worth testing this out as you go along and you're backing up your data or creating dump data files. So I've already gone ahead and just created this very simple application. We've got a core app here with the settings and we've got a blog tool here, which I've just connected up, created a simple model and just wanted to create some foreign keys. So we've got the category table and the post table. So let's just get going. Uh, you can see here that I've already performed a managed by dump data and it says that there's no such table. That's because we actually haven't migrated yet. There isn't any, actually any tables. So that makes perfect sense, right? So let's go ahead and just uh, migrate. Okay, so now let's um, re-perform or let's just perform that again. I'll just move this up. I'll just clear it actually. Uh, so let's go ahead now and just uh, run the command again. Excuse me while I just sort this out. So um, dump data. So if we run the command, you'll see that the actual data just appears in the console here. So this is how, it's, this is how it works. Um, Django has dumped all this data. So this represents all the fields and all the data that's currently in the database that is needed to, in order to replicate the data again, or the database again, you'd imagine. So what we can do, if you've not used this command before, is we can then specify where we want to put that data or what we want to save that data as. Now there's three different file types that we can produce here. Um, we've got the JSON file, um, we can create a YAML file, and I think we can also build an XML file. I think that's possible um, without looking at the documentation. I think that's the case. So I think the reality of this is that I won't go through building an XML file or a YAML file. Um, because generally JSON is what's utilized. Now there will be cases maybe that you use a YAML file, for example, and I find that a YAML file can be easier to read in actual fact um, than a JSON file. But if you were to follow the Django guide on how to make a YAML file, um, to actually load it back in again, there's a few different steps that you need to take. And oh, we'll go through that, we'll go through that. Let's just go ahead and create a simple database backup first. So generally we use uh, the name of the database. So my database is called DB, and then we use a file extension, JSON. So in actual fact, we don't need to define the file extension because the default file extension is going to be JSON. So let's just go ahead and run this. And you can see here, we've now actually created a, a file. Um, it's in kind of this JSON format. Um, so it'd be good to actually have a file extension, wouldn't it? Um, so we do that. Okay, so there we go. So we've got our file. Like I said, you can um, define the file extension. Now you notice straight away that this is obviously um, compressed. Um, you can read it, but there be times where you want to just kind of explore this a little bit more because one of the things obviously you can do here is that if you're changing the um, adding fields to your table if you want to change data and so on manually, then you want to be able to kind of edit this file potentially before you then recreate the database. So there's a few um, switches or flags that we can utilize here. One of them is the indent. 
So what we can do here is we, we can define the indentation of this code here. So it will be displayed in a nice kind of readable format. So let's just go for uh, four indents. And then we go ahead and do exactly the same thing again. So we're just uh, db.json. And you can now see, for example, it's a little bit more readable. So let's just go ahead and have a look to see what we've got. Now, if you've seen the previous tutorial, which I mentioned um, first of all, uh, we've gone through all the different tables or default tables that we find in Django. If you're not familiar with the default tables and what they do, etc., then please go ahead and have a look at that tutorial. I'll explain what they are and what they do and so on. So you can see here we've got this model. So this is the auth permission. So this is just defining obviously the table. Um, we've got a primary key and we've got then the fields. Okay, so we've got auth permissions. Um, let's see what else we've saved here. Um, there's a lot of those. There's a lot of data there in the auth permissions. Uh, we've got content types, um, but not too much else because this is just the uh, default. We actually haven't saved the blog yet or had added any data to that yet. So we've got loads of stuff there, which is great. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm just gonna go ahead into the admin and just add some data to the uh, post or the blog model. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, so I've gone ahead and just created some data for this blog here. So we could just use some other commands. So previously we used this indent here um, so let's go ahead and now have a look at what else we can back up. So let's start, start from the start. So if I were just to run dump data, that's going to dump all the data from the database. So that's not always ideal. I want to maybe select different parts of the database I want to back up or different applications, for example, because this is kind of a, a modular way of working, is it not? So we've, we kind of separate our different apps in our Django application. So let's go ahead and now just back up an app. So this is just a simple case of using the previous command here, dump data, and then we just need to select or define the actual application we want to back up. And then we just call that whatever we want to call that. Oh, <laughs> did that wrong. Jason, and there we go. Okay, so there we have a backup of just the the table, the table from the block. So this is just the models here. So the category and the post, sorry, table. Um, so we've just basically made a backup of that. So we can go one step further if we want to, and we can also select potentially what table we want to back up. So if we just wanted to back up category or post, we could also do that too. So to perform that type of action, we're just going to need to say the blog and just extend this. So blog dot and then post. So that's going to select the post table and then we just save that as is. So there's, I think there's just one item in there. So let's have a look and we've got one item. So obviously what we can do is we can start to um, utilize other switches and flags, etc. So here we use the uh, the indent command, um, and we can then just define the indent. So I'm just going to use four. So there we go. So we've only got one entry in the in the blog post, and there it is. So that's kind of a handy way of selecting data. Now what I can also do is uh, I can just copy this, of course, and then I can go ahead and add some data here, or I can use some other tools to auto generate some code or some data for me. And then obviously you can put it into this JSON format and then obviously put it back into the database. So that's a, a fairly handy tool to, to utilize or to extract this data out to then be able to copy and paste maybe and add some more um, fields and so on and then put it back into the database. So another important command um, that we have available. Uh, so let's go along and just uh, Again, select the blog. So if I run this, it's going to back up both the post and the category table. If I run this command here, just on blog. So what I can also do is I can use the exclude. So I can say basically exclude. And then I can define what I want to exclude. So 
let's just make sure we put this in the right place so indent for and then I'm just going to define what I want to exclude so in this case it's going to be category and then obviously I'm going to save blog and then create the JSON file so there's no app with the label category so you can see that you're going to need to also define the block dot category so let's go ahead and do that and there we go so let's have a look in the json file again and you can see that all i've got here again exactly the same situation as before i've just saved the the posts and not the category so because i've mentioned it previously the yaml file um, let's go ahead and have a look and compare a yaml file to a json file so in order for us to actually create a yaml file uh, one way we can do this is first of all just pip install pyaml so let's go ahead and do that and now we can actually go ahead and run and save as a, a yaml file so we clear that and we'll run this so what we're going to do here is a data dump um, and notice here that we define the format here so we've got the indent of two then we define the format we're going to use because we're not going to use the default format and then we're going to save it as a db.yaml file so if we take a look at the YAML file, you can see that the format is pretty much exactly the same. It's nice and compressed. There's obviously less curly braces and so on, which some people may prefer. Um, but essentially, it's just recording exactly the same information as we've seen in the JSON file. So now let's just go ahead and create a, a data dump um, of the whole database. So we want indent for say and then we're going to to save this in a file called db.json okay so this is going to save the whole database to the json file um, so this represents the whole database so let's go ahead now and just uh, remove delete the database and then just try and replicate our database with this data so there's a few ways of getting rid of all the data in the database. You can see here flush, for example, removes all the data, but the migration will um, persist or the migration files will still persist. So let's just do this first. Now let's just run this. So PY manage PY and then just flush. So it says here, it gives us a nice little warning. Um, this will destroy all the data. Um, are you sure you want to do this? So let's just type in yes. There we go. So we should have absolutely no data in our data base. Now, if we go back into the migrations, you can see that the migrations still persist. So um, let's see what happens um, when we run the previous command where we looked at the data in the uh, block. So we've got with what we're doing here is we're just excluding category and we're just going to have a look in the blog. So we're going to create that file. Let's just save it as something else. So DB1. So you can see there's absolutely no data in the database. So this can be handy because what we've done here is we've got the initial data that's been set in the database. So all the fields remain in the database, right? So it's just the data that's been removed. So what we could do or what we could try to do at this point is now use our db.json file to put all the data back into a database, right? That makes sense because what we've done is we've saved the data from the database into the db.json file. Uh, so you would think now that we can do that. So let's go ahead and try that. So we've got two commands, dump data and load data. So let's see if we can now load the data um, and then we just need to select then the data we want to load. So this is going to be db.json. Now remember, all we've done is we build the database, we've made a little bit of data, and we've saved it as db.json. So you'd imagine now, just by removing all the data from a database and then loading up this file, it would work, right? So if I press enter, you can see we've got a problem. So for beginners, this is probably the most common problem that you're going to um, come up against. And I'm just now going to tell you why that is, or hopefully explain a little bit why that is, and so that you can avoid this 
um, at your peril. Because at this point, you've now got this problem whereby you've got no data, but you've got a file with your data in and you've got no way of um, now working out how to get this data back in. So at this point, you're in a pretty big stress because you've got a lot of data you're trying to put back in your database and you don't want to recreate it. So what's the deal? So it's worth telling you at this point that if we were to go into our table, if we didn't have any foreign keys, um, then likelihood is what the, the command that we just performed would have been okay. So it's because we have these connectivity, oh, sorry, these foreign keys, um, the connections and links between tables, that's what's causing the issues here. So to go one step further, it's not actually our database. So I made it sound like it's our foreign keys that's the problem. So we've set up our database perfectly. This isn't the problem. It's how Django is saving that information in the database. That's what the problem is. So in Django, we have a built-in application. Let's go into the settings here. Uh, let's just move this across, close that. So in settings here, we have contents type. So this is an installed app by default. Um, contents type. So in the previous tutorial, um, as I mentioned earlier, we went over the database. So in the left hand side here, this is the database that we're currently working with. And we've created this Django content type table. This happens automatically. So let's just see this table. You can see what's being recorded here are the um, applications and the corresponding tables. So the contents type is an application that's built into Django that tracks the corresponding relationships between all apps and models in the project and then records them in the content type table. This table is automatically generated when we perform a migration. So trying to think of a way to visually show you what's happening or some of the problems that are occurring here. I've gone into the Django administration just to create some information. So let's just create a, a category, for example. So let's add a new category. I'm just going to add a new category, save another category, and then another category. Okay, so I've got three categories. So let's go into my categories. Now, obviously, these categories have been created in the database. So let's go ahead and have a look at them. So I've gone over to, um, I've got, I'm running SQLite uh, extension here. So I didn't explain this um, if you haven't seen the previous tutorial. So it's an, just an extension in Visual Studio Code. Um, I right click on the database and explore the database. This option will appear. And I've gone into here, right clicked on my category show table, and you can see the table. So this is all the data that's currently in my database. Now notice the ID. So this is an arbitrary number that gets automatically generated. Now watch what happens when, for example, I delete a, a category. So I press delete. Yep, I'm sure. Now, if I go back in my database, I don't know if I can refresh this, um, show table again, you can see that's missing. But what you can see here is that the ID now is one and three. So what happens when I add a new one? Well, it's not number two, it's going to be number four. So if I add a new category now and save, and then go back into my database, you can see it's number four. Now, that's, that's absolutely fine. The data is going to be absolutely fine. That's not a problem. But what potentially is a problem is this. So let's go back into the blog uh, models. Now, remember here, we're creating a foreign key between the category in the post and the category here in the category table. Now, that's OK. Um, so what's going to happen is that, for example, we've got a category here named test. So what we're doing here is we're saying this post that we're going to build is part of this category, which is test. And let's just imagine that is um, ID number one. OK, so it's this category, ID number one. We've set that post up. That's all good. Right. So then what we do, we make another post and this time we make it connected to the category of this one here, which is three. OK, so hopefully you're following on following along here. So now we've made two posts which are connected to these categories, ID one and three. So the problem is here, potentially, that when we recreate this data here, 
in a new table, what's going to happen is this ID gets automatically generated by that new table. So we don't have an ID one, three and four anymore. We now have an ID of one, two and three. Because remember Django is automatically um, incrementing this ID for every item that's in the database. So when we make a data dump, for example, so this is just a general example. This could be the case when we dump the data back into the database or a fresh database. Now it's not just the category here that has this arbitrary number, it's everything. So for example, uh, well I say everything, not everything, but most things here in the database. So in the blog here, uh, I'll show you this table, there's nothing here, but if I make a new entry in, in the post, so if I add a new post, You can see that this post has been automatically given or provided number one. And that again is just going to be auto incremented every time I add a new item. You can see it's connected to category ID number one. So that was just establishing the fact that it is connect connected to a category via the category ID. So hopefully that kind of points out the problem. You can potentially then see what the issue is now or one of the issues that we might have in this database. Now, of course, we don't actually define these IDs, do we? So if we go into the model here, we, we don't ever define this ID. This is just something that automatically gets applied in our model. So going back to the problem we had with putting the data back into a new table is this idea of alignment. We can't align the category uh, number one to the category up here, for example. If we use IDs, we know that this isn't going to be potentially a very consistent way of extracting data and then putting data back into the database. So let's take a look at what Django helps us, um, or let's have a look at how Django helps us overcome this problem. So this is changed uh, for Django 3, um, and we are using Django 3 here, uh, 3.1 documentation. So we've got something called natural foreign key and natural primary key. So this is a way of, for example, natural primary is it omits the primary key in the serialized data. That's important potentially. So we don't need to worry about IDs here and ID alignment because we can just omit primary keys. And you can see here the natural foreign, this is used as a natural key model method to serialize any foreign key and many to many relationships to objects. So essentially what's happening here Instead of using this ID only, we've used this natural key. So what we do here is we actually are now removing uh, both permission objects and uh, content type from the actual backing up of our database. And then we're using natural keys now to actually formulate a method of creating that foreign key or establishing that foreign key between data. It is a tricky one to explain in some respects, but you can move over to the documentation about natural keys. This also gives you a general overview of what's happening. Um, so my examples I provided you was kind of a general case idea. So the principles here that is that we're you trying to utilize IDs primary IDs to connect data within our database. And it's not always easy to, like it says here, predict when we recreate the data because of this idea that Django auto creates IDs. It's not always easy to predict the ID to make the foreign key between data. So have a read at the, of the serializing uh, Django objects here. And uh, if there's any questions, by all means, just leave them in the comments section and we can have a little conversation about it if there's something you want to discuss. So I have now added some more data into the database again, just some random data. So we do have uh, data in the database, so posts and categories. So we're just going to go ahead again and recreate our data. And then we're going to try and remove all the data again and then add this data or the backed up data back into the database. But we're going to use some of the different options um, to do this. So here we go. Here we go. So we're going to use uh, the manage pie file or the option and we're going to dump data. Okay. So we're going to use the 
natural uh, foreign option and then the natural uh, primary option this is going to be fairly long primary and then what we're going to do is exclude some items so we're going to exclude uh, we're just going to shorten this up to e instead of putting or defining the whole word exclude and we're going to just um, exclude content types so we're not going to back up this. So this is something that Django will auto generate when we do make the migration back, the data back. And also we're going to um, not include or exclude the auth uh, permission. Okay, so then we'll just indent this, uh, maybe by four. And then the last thing to do is obviously to move that into a file, which we're going to be called db.json. And it looks like we've got a problem. Um, so we didn't use a space after the indent. So there needs to be a space there. And there we go. Okay, so we've got our new file now, uh, db.json. Um, so if we were to compare this to the previous one, that would probably have been a good idea. Um, there obviously will be some data that hasn't been um, included. So let's now just uh, go ahead and now try and add this back. So let's use the flush command again. So we're going to flush the data. Okay, so now we flushed all the data from our database again. Let's uh, go ahead and, I was trying to change this up a bit. Let's go ahead and see, first of all, to make sure the data has been removed. If we were to take a look now in our table, we shouldn't have any data. There we go, so there's no data in our table again. So let's now go ahead and try and put some data back in to our database. So we're going to use the, the load option this time, so load data, and then it's the db.json. There we go, so we've installed 12 objects uh, from one fixture, fixture. Now the fixture is just the terminology, if I haven't already mentioned this, um, of a file that has data. So when you see the, um, the word or terminology fixture in Django, it just means a file of data that we can utilize um, to place or load into our database. Okay, so if we go back into our Explorer here, go to category, show table, there we go. So we've got our three items back. Now noticed I did mention this idea of um, the IDs being auto-generated. Um, that was again just a, a general kind of give you a picture here in case you're thinking well it didn't make these again because um, two still missing okay so we now have a fully working um, data dump or dump data and load data